asking about his skills. Muscled up, feeling like he could haul any kind of weights or any kind of challenge. He could carry it across in a wheelbarrow faster across the construction site than anyone else. He was making fun of those who were just a little bit more mature in age and maybe not quite as virile as he was, thinking that, you know what, no man on this construction site can do what I can do. And the older gentleman turned to him and said, wait a minute, why don't you put your money where your mouth is? Let's just see. He said, I bet you that I can put something in that wheelbarrow and I can carry it across uh, this lot to the other side. I can wheel back to the other, and you won't be able to do the same as what I've just done. All right, the young man said, you're on. Let's see what what you can do, old man. As he began to just boast even more so about his particular strength, his youth and his virileness. Well, the old man got out the wheelbarrow, pointed to him and said, get in. Now think about it for a moment. Who was powerful? He was saying, I'm powerful. I can do this. You cannot. I'm powerful. Well, isn't it about time that you say you're powerful? Isn't it about time you say I'm powerful? Now, wait a minute. I know some of you have already begun to think, thoughts going, wait a minute. Powerful. I'm not powerful. I'm not powerful. You see, the whole concept here is that we have quite often questioned and begin to wonder and doubt our abilities and our skills, our ability to be powerful. And we begin to say, yes, it's lovely to say it, it's lovely to proclaim it, it's lovely to talk about it, but I really don't feel it, I don't embrace it, I don't live it each and every day. Isn't it a time that we wake up to our calling to be powerful in our world today? Wake up to those wonderful, powerful thoughts. Wake up to those wonderful awareness that the thoughts within you are shaping and developing and molding your reality. This is a thing that, a theme that we echo over and over again, but sometimes something so simple needs to be brought to the forefront that's going to shape our day. We realize then that something amazing happens when we begin to regard our thoughts as powerful, that the very source of our power begins with our thoughts, how we think what we're thinking about our day, what we're thinking about how we live and how we move. Those kind of thoughts are those that are shaping exactly our abilities, our skills, and what we will manifest in our world today. When we realize that you have the power to transform anything and everything, you are powerful. And so I think it's really important that we say this together. I am powerful. Let's say it. I am powerful. Do you mean it? Oh, I think we got to say it again then. I am powerful. That means that you are powerful over fear, doubt, questions. There is a power within you that can transform every experience when you feel less than or frightened, when you feel lack, when you feel somehow that things are not at your highest and best. I am powerful. Today I had to awaken to this as my partner Robert came out this morning crying. He's in a lot of pain. He's not here with us today. He said, the pain is so great, I just don't know if I continue to go on. This past week, the cancer ate up his ear. It actually fell off in his sleep. Now the cancer is spread into the jaw, and the challenge for him is to be able to swallow, to be able to eat. And we're now thinking, what are the new ways? And of course, what comes to your mind as you are the caregiver, as you are the one who loves someone so dearly and hates to see them suffer? The pain, the, the agony of seeing someone going through this seems overwhelming, and you begin to feel powerless, and I begin to think, I'm powerless, but I'm not. But you know how those thoughts creep in? We think, I don't know if I can do this. And then we want to jump in fear to our worst case scenarios. What does this mean? Where will this go? What will this be for? What it, and sadness, sorrow, waves of this come across our lives and we begin to feel like the worst is about to unfold for the journey of our life. And then there's this wake up call that slaps you across the face, this wonderful promise that says, be ye transformed, be ye renewed, be, be ye changed by the renewing of those thoughts, by changing those thoughts by simply making a transition in your whole way of thinking. Because what was coming at me was a wave of fear and those fear thoughts wanted to hold onto me, embrace me, grip me, and enable me to feel like, you know, I was powerless. But instead I said, I release those thoughts. 
Thank God for friends I could call on quickly and say, slap me across the head, would you, with some truth? And I had silent unity on speed dial, and I called them, and I said, I need a wake-up prayer. Come on, give me a prayer right now as I awaken my thoughts to really understanding who I am, what I am, and the power that God has enabled within each and every one of us as I begin to change my thinking to be fearless in every situation. You realize this, that then you become this change machine for good. As we change our thoughts, we change everything in the outcome of the journey of our life. We become a change machine. How many of you have seen a change machine? Well, let's look around here because there's plenty of change machines here. But how many of you have seen the tangible, real change machine on the wall? Maybe you've gone to the car wash and you had a $5 bill. You put that $5 bill in... And voila, like magic, comes out the equivalent in quarters. And you're like, wow, how did they turn that paper into metal? I just love that little magic machine. You know, you just put some paper in, and out comes these wonderful metal coins. And I think, ah, what's going on inside that thing? How about what's going inside each one of us as we become the change machines? That life circumstances and conditions come to you and feed you something, but out what comes out is something totally different. What comes out is something magnificent, wonderful, uplifted, encouraged, empowered, and powerful because you are a change machine. Oh, yes. Not that I put a $5 in and I'm expecting coins to come out of you, but that as circumstances, conditions come to you, you have the power. You have the power to make a change in your life. You have the power to take any condition or circumstance in your life and change it by the renewing, by the changing of your thought life. Because your thoughts are creating everything, every circumstance and every condition. They're creating this moment right here and now. Your thoughts that say, I am open to the highest and best. Well, you sang that, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. That should set your thoughts in the opening of the service to say, I want my heart to be open to hear every kind of nugget of truth that I can embrace. I want to receive the highest and best. I am already setting my thoughts in a way, in a pattern to unfold the power, the goodness that God has already instilled within me. Now, circumstances or conditions can come to you and they may look like that $5 bill, but you transform them into coins. You see, Jesus transformed every circumstance of fear, lack, disease, and made them whole, complete, abundant, and full of peace. To, to sum up Jesus, you might say, he would say, it looks this way, but I see it this way. I, yes, the circumstances and the conditions are this way, but I see it this way. To sit there with my partner, Robert, uh, this morning, I just said, I remove all fear. I remove all fear. I do not see this as a fearful scenario. I see it as the goodness of God unfolding that no matter what the outcome is, it's for my highest and best, for Robert's highest and best. Suddenly that opens the doors for transition and change to happen, for transformation to happen. Fear lifts. You may see it this way, but through eyes of faith, I see it a different way. Don't think for one moment that Jesus didn't see the physical challenges. I'm not saying that Jesus didn't see that in feeding the 5,000, there are far too many mouths to feed with just this one basket of fish and loaves. That he didn't see the challenges. I see these lepers and their disease. I see the depth of it, that he didn't see the challenge of being out on the ocean or I mean on the Sea of Galilee and, and seeing the sh his ship tossed to and fro. He saw the physical challenges, but he looked beyond each and every one of them. He looked right through them to see the miracle. I've shared a story with you before. Let me share it again. Years ago, I had the opportunity of going on the MCC cruise, and we went to St. Thomas. How many of you were with us on that? Anyone here that was on that cruise years ago? We went as a church, and we had the wonderful opportunity to uh, do some excursions. We got to St. Thomas, and uh, the, so numerous of us said, let's go on this scuba dive walk. Scuba dive walk where we're gonna be walking on the floor of the ocean. You put this kind of tank on your head and there's a hose coming out with air going in. You got a little mask that you're looking through is this thing that looked like a toilet seat's put on your head, you know, on your shoulders. And you get to walk on the bottom of the ocean. And as you walk around, you could reach out and uh, see all kinds of amazing things, sea urchins and fish all around you. And it was an amazing, colorful thing, sight to behold. Well, 
you stepped off the dock, lowered down the ladder, got down to the bottom of the ocean floor, and you're looking through this, you know, toilet tank on your head, this little mask, and you're feeling the air going, and everything's looking great, and I'm having a good time, and I'm looking, seeing every one of our friends climb down the ladder, and here comes Robert down the ladder, and many others, and like, oh, how wonderful, we're all down there, and we're starting to walk around, you know, on the bottom of the ocean, and the waves are going all around, and all of a sudden, I begin to scratch my nose, and I really, ooh, And I stopped and I looked at the glass. And I looked at that glass in front of my face. And I realized I'm in this little toilet tank here, this little cavity. That's all I have of oxygen. And out there, it's the ocean. And when I stopped and looked at the glass and the circumstances, I began to panic. I'm kind of claustrophobic, and I began to think, oh, my God, I'm stuck in this little thing, and this is the only way of the air, and I was trying to scratch my nose and put my hand down, and I'm like, oh, 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 don't, don't go back up there because this is the only place where the oxygen was, and all of a sudden, I began to think, I am stuck, and I am trapped inside this little, I felt like, you know, someone in a car, when the car is sinking, and all you got is a little air bubble in the corner, and you're trying to survive, well, that was the mental image I had, and I began to slowly walk away from the rest of the group, climb up the ladder as fast as I could, got out and said, get this thing off of me, you know, <laughs> and uh, she, the assistant there said, okay, I'll help you out, and I got my breath, and she said, you can go down one more time, I'm going to give you one more chance, and that's it, you can't come back up again, and expect to go down, you get one chance, look through the glass, I went down, and when I began to look through the glass, I saw a world that's available for me, and all my friends participating in. I saw the beauty of the ocean and what the excursion was all about. The metaphor of our life is this, that you are powerful, but don't look at the glass, look through the glass. How important it is in our life, no matter what the circumstances are, no matter what the conditions are right now, you may feel like you're suffocating. You may feel like there's not enough air to breathe. You may not feel like you're struggling. You may feel claustrophobic in a world pressuring all around you. But when you look through, as Jesus looked through every circumstance to beyond to see the miraculous, that's when it unfolds for our hearts and our lives. I want to encourage you to understand that there is a power for you in your life that's available when your thoughts change from what I see in this moment to what is possible out there. That's the amazing journey for our life because every effect you see in your outside or physical world has a specific cause and its origin is found within your thoughts. He taught it's not what's going on on the outside, it's what's going on in the inside. And when we understand that, it doesn't matter what's going on in our world around us. It doesn't matter that there may be chaos in the world around us. It doesn't matter all these needs around us. We may see the the needs of compassion of the homeless and those being overwhelming and saying it's just far too great. But when we look through to the miracle, we see we can do amazing things as we share, as we give. This is a beautiful example of what it's all about in the story of the feeding of the 5,000. For as Jesus took what was given, broke and blessed it, the example of sharing and giving was caught on by those around and everyone ate and there were 12 baskets left over. Today we see an example of the collaboration of people sharing in the blessing of God, giving and making the bounty immense so that we too will live in a world of 12 baskets left over, of compassion sharing for our, those in need, the families, the homeless, those who are hungry, and those that need our assistance. We're there as we look through the circumstance and look beyond. This teaching of the ancient scriptures really comes to alive when we understand this in Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2, which you read in a beautiful paraphrased text. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, meaning it's, this is very important, take heed, Do not conform yourself to the pattern. Do not shape yourself. Do not mold yourself to the pattern of this world because the pattern of this world is going to be fear, doubt, questioning, wondering. I can't. 
It's not possible. That's the pattern of a world around us constantly. Do not let yourself be conformed to that. Do not be molded to that. Do not be shaped by that, it says. Very important, but be ye transformed, be ye reshaped, be ye made new, be ye molded in a new direction, shall we say, by the renewing of your mind. That renewing of your mind is that change machine that you are called to be that says this is what the circumstances are, but what comes out is something totally different. $5 bill comes in, but coins come out. This is what it may see. Fear and doubt and questioning may be all around me, but what comes out is the power and ability to believe great things are unfolding and God is at work in all scenarios in every situation. Because when you understand the power of your thoughts, note this, watch your thoughts for one minute because those thoughts become your words. And watch your words, because those words become your actions. And watch your actions, then, because those actions become your habits. And watch your habits, because they soon become your character. And watch your character, because it soon becomes your destiny. And when we think about this whole process, how important it is that we are there to watch our thoughts, guard our thoughts. For this whole work of being powerless and being power, or being powerful is an inside job. It's a job that begins in the inside. Being powerful it starts from the inside out. Believing that you can, believing that it's possible, it starts in the innermost being within your heart. For the reality creation that you want to do in your world is an inside job, not an outside job. Don't look to someone else to do it for you. You do it. You begin to claim it. You begin to renew thoughts. And yet one of the things that you have to do in renewing process is to let go of old thoughts. But just let me tell you this. When we continue to let go and let go, they kind of creep back, don't they? You've got to replace them with new thoughts. The whole renewing, the whole transforming process is... You can't just keep on living and saying, I'm a failure, I'm going to release that. I'm going to let go of my failure. I'm going to let go of my failure. You've got to replace it with a thought that I am now successful. You've got to let go of the thought of lack, and you can't keep saying, I'm going to let go of lack. I'm going to let go of lack. You've got to replace it with the thought is prosperity. This is the renewing process that happens within your life. We look at it as scripture. Where is this explained to us over and over again? But we find where throughout scripture where water symbolizes our consciousness and is a wonderful symbol of our thought. Water washing away, water cleansing, new thought washing away, new thought removing constantly. We look at the word of God and we find within the scriptures and the ancient truths that unfolded for us. We look inside there and we find the examples that the ancient Jews lived by purity laws. Their desire was to be completely pure, that in all ways that they might live in purity. And so they created 600 and some purity ritual laws. Laws like washing your hands before you eat. Laws about what you could eat, what was kosher, what was not kosher. And they were working from the outside in constantly, thinking that somehow by doing these things, we could maintain a purity within us. Then there became John the Baptist, who brought forth this ancient tradition of cleansing and washing called baptism. People came to the rivers to embody this washing away the old, washing away in a ritual. For some, it was simply a bathing process, but others, it became aware, awareness that what is moving water, and mind you, every baptism was meant to be in moving water, that the water is washing away old and welcoming new. That changing of a thought is ever welcoming something new. Where do we find this then in Scripture that's kind of over and over again that Jesus had said to John that he wanted to be baptized? And John the Baptist says, wait a minute, no, you should be baptizing me. But Jesus instead said, uh, I am in needful of this because it's very important. It has a greater purpose. It is that uh, I too must do this that righteousness might be fulfilled. Read about it in Matthew you'll find it. Jesus saying, I need to be baptized. I need to have the old washed away. I need to be cleansed so that righteousness, meaning right thinking, might happen within me, might be fulfilled within me. The amazing unfolding of Jesus' baptism was not that he was joining a church because, well, the Christian church didn't exist at that time. So baptism wasn't to join a church, right? Baptism wasn't necessarily to become a Christian because, well, the Christian movement hadn't even started. It followed after Jesus. So what was Jesus' baptism all about? But a releasing, a purity, a letting go 
And that is this washing that happens. Now, you can wash with all the water, but when we understand that symbolism of change of thought, washing with a new thought, there's an immense cleansing and a release, a release of fear and doubt and questioning that allows us to live that wonderful statement that says, I am powerful, and to allow it to be exactly who and what we are. I am powerful. Jesus knew that thoughts have power. He understood this, that we have to let go, that we have to release, and his desire then was a passion to be baptized. John's baptism was all about repentance, right? What is repentance? He said, I baptize for repentance. Repentance is a change. You were going this way, you changed that way. What is the change? Change in direction? No, it's a change of thought. It's a change of heart, change of mind. It's begin to thinking in new ways. The ancients were trying to teach us something that we're explaining here today, 2,000 years ago, that you are powerful when you renew your thoughts, when you change your thinking, when you let go and release, when you allow it to be washed away and welcome the new within your hearts and your life. There's a kind of power we have that's spoken of in 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 6. It says this, and here's this beautiful text. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. Now, some of us would like to wage war like the world does. We get upset, we get angry. Give us a gun, give us a weapon, give us a bomb. Let's go back. You did that to me, I'll do it to you, tit for tat. Scripture says, though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. Because where is every war? Where does this, a war start? A war starts within. It starts within someone. It took one person to start the war in their type of thinking. Their greed, their fear, their aggression, their desire for power, their hatred ignited everything that happened that unfolded then in a war happening. It takes one thought, but we don't fight war. We don't wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with, the scripture says, are not the weapons of the world. On contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Demol demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments, it says, and every pretension that sets itself against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought and transform every thought. Wow, ancient truth coming alive today. It simply says when you are struggling with something, you're at war with fear, you're at war with doubt, you're at war with your own self, you're at war and feeling like I, I don't love myself, I don't feel good enough, whatever it may be that's going on within your own life, you don't wage war as the world does, but what you do is you take captive, it says, take captive the thought, take captive that thought and say, I will not think that way. I will think in a new way. I will welcome a new thought. I will embrace a new way of thinking. I will change my world by changing my thinking. And it starts with the renewal of some loving thoughts. Wow, loving thoughts. Here's the key that we wanna see unfold in our life is it all begins with every day waking up with loving thoughts. Embrace thoughts that are filled with love, love for yourself. And let me tell you this, if you don't have a healthy, self-love for who you are and what you are, I encourage you, you better get one right away. Express, speed, do not pass go, do not collect $200, just get right there. Get to that place of saying, I need a healthy self-love. I need to value who I am. I need to see that in a stronger way. So we begin our, our day with this wonderful understanding that loving thoughts are the key to shaping of the world in the way that we want. We are powerful, and the power we use is the power of love, and the powerful, loving thoughts that we share in the world begin to ignite a newfound reality within our world. It says in Philippians chapter 4, verses 8 through 9, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatsoever is true, whatsoever is noble, whatsoever is right, whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is lovely, loving, Whatsoever is admirable, think on these things. Think on these things. This is how you start your day as a powerful person. This is how you do it, how you live out that power. This is how you transform the world. Today I begin with loving thoughts. Everything, every thought is shaped in love. There is a loving essence to every thought about that I think about myself, about my day, about my people, people I encounter, about my circumstances. Everything is filled with such wonderful love. 
The compassion ministries that we celebrate today of 18 years was birthed out of loving thoughts. Loving thoughts that said, I see a need. I love my world. God so loved the world that God gave, not God so loved the world that God gets. God gave. And that inspiration of loving thoughts said, let's give to the world around us in ways that we can touch them, meet their needs, that we can be a blessing. Now, we often fail in our lives because we're often thoughtless. We don't think about the power of our thoughts. We don't think about the power it holds to shape and to mold our world. We just let it go and random thoughts come our way. We're, we left the door wide open, the barn door open and the cattle run out. We leave the barn door open and anything can come in, you might say, in that old analogy. But we have to say, wait a minute, where do we put a gate and close on these things? We discipline ourselves to say, on these things I will think, lovely, good, pure, those things that are right, that are noble, as Scripture says, or admirable. That's the framework of mind that I will live from. You are powerful, whether you realize it or not. Today, I had to wake up to this very truth myself. I am powerful. When I saw the circumstances of Roberts at home, we had to administer the highest amount of morphine yet to date for him to have peace with the pain he's going through. And you know, it's troubling to your spirit to see your loved one in pain, crying, suffering, and you feel powerless. And then I realize there is no fear. Whatever transpires is all good. Life is immortal. Life is eternal. Life is ongoing. Robert will always be with me, no matter what what the context I know this and I'm also fearless in believing for healing even though the circumstances and conditions the doctors say we've given up we don't have anything more that we can do we know all things unfold we're not in for the good and we're not powerless so that power says I overcome any kind of fear I will not be afraid I will not be worried or stressed. I'll just allow the, it to be beautiful experiences of the wonderful divine at work within his body in different shapes and different forms. Whatever manifestation it is, I allow the highest and best. I may have some wishes, but I allow the universe to say this or something better. What is the something better as we move forward? We just know and claim it's the all good. We're not powerless. We don't have to live in a fear. We don't have to be afraid. Renewing the thoughts just gave me a wonderful peace as I walked through our garden this morning before church. I just thought of the beauty of just knowing that I'm not powerless in this circumstance, but God is with me, and the strength of God is there for me, for Robert, and for everyone and we are overcomers of every fear, every doubt, and every question to live in perfect peace that says all is good all the time, for God is good all the time.